I think most of us take our heads for granted, right? If you get up in the morning and you know you brush your teeth and you look in the mirror and you you see your head, you you probably don't think too much about it as being special or unique or different. You might be worried about you know a spot you have on your forehead or something like that. But but in reality, um, our heads are really bizarre and unusual parts of our bodies. We we differ from other animals in so many ways in our heads. I mean, our brains are enormous. We have an external nose. We have a chin. Uh, humans are the only mammal that doesn't have a snout. Um, we, we have visible whites in our eyes. We have a neck that comes down the, the bottom of our head rather than sticking out the back. Um, our heads are really bizarre, truly different aspects of our body. And in fact, if you were to meet a Homo erectus on the street, uh, you'd be more or less the same from the neck down. It's really from the neck up that makes you different from a Homo erectus or even a, a Neanderthal, our, our closest evolutionary cousin. So, if you want to understand what makes humans the way we are, we need to understand uh, why our heads are the way we are. And, and the other thing that's interesting about heads is that almost every particle that enters our body goes through our heads. All the thinking we do goes on in our heads. We see, we smell, we taste, we hear, we sense balance with our heads. We do uh, innumerable, incredibly complex functions in, the, in our heads, and our heads still have to grow from the size of a walnut, really, up to the size of a soccer ball, and perform all those functions really well all throughout our lives uh, under incredibly varied conditions. And so, how is it that the head is able to do that? How is it able to, to do all those functions in such a small space, grow from such a small size to big size, be so dynamic, and at the same time also be so evolvable, so different between species? To me, that's what a really interesting question, set of interesting questions to ask about the head and really uh, why I set about to, to write this book. I think one of the fun things about the head is that because the head is involved in everything your body does, that there's information about almost you know every major functional task in human evolution that's what's important for natural selection, and that includes locomotion. So you know one of the jobs that the head has to do when you walk or run is to keep relatively still uh, and balance itself so that you can actually uh, can have a sense of balance, right, so you know where your body is, because we have our major, major organs of balance are actually in the inner ear. And also, um, you want to stabilize the eyes so that you know, the world isn't too jiggly like a bad movie camera. And we have evidence in the head, actually, for changes in locomotion, right? Not only when we first became bipedal and we started orienting the neck vertically, but when we started running, uh, we see a whole series of shifts in the head, including uh, increases in the size of the organs of balance that measure pitching motion to the head. So pitching is when you do this, and when you when you walk, you don't really cause your head to pitch very rapidly. But when you run, every time you hit the ground, your head pitches forward very rapidly every time you hit the ground. And it turns out that with the origins of the genus Homo, the size of the semicircular canals that actually measure in the head the accelerations of the head in the pitch plane uh, get bigger and more sensitive. Uh, around two million years ago, and that's bigger not only compared to Australopithecines that preceded the genus Homo, but also compared to other apes. And the only behavior we can think of that would benefit from that is, is running, because running, again, has that rapid pitching motion every time your body hits the ground. Uh, we also see in the head evidence for changes in thermoregulation that would be important for vigorous exercise, such as adding external nodes. This is basically a you know, in addition to picking it, right, it's in looking nice, it's a turbulence generator. So it forces air to go in, go through a little no valve, turn a right angle, go through another valve, and that makes the air incredibly turbulent inside the nose, and it helps the, the internal nose humidify and warm air as it goes into the lungs. It helps to capture that humidity on the way out, and shortening the nose and shortening the oral cavity also helped us increase turbulence of air um, 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 breathed in during during running, uh, which probably doesn't go much through the nose. And we also have evidence for changes in the way the head is balanced in terms of the arm, because the arm is actually linked mechanically to the head, so that when you when you when you when you pump your arms, your arms are actually helping keep your head still uh, when you run. So we see lots of information in the head that relate not just to chewing and swallowing and seeing and hearing, but also um, things that happen all the way down to your feet, like like running.